So, in this third part of the lecture, uh, let us understand about what are the different steps which are involved in the assembly of the straight slip form structures. So, you can see the diagram and let me explain the step. So, in the first step, you can see like, uh, like you will have a kicker here. So, the kicker, it will be of a kicker or we can call by the starter. So, we can say like, you know, something like this. This could be the kicker or it is a starter, which would be of like, you know, it's 150 mm deep. It is cast over the sort of the base slab or the foundation. So, once this kicker is or the starter is cast on the base slab, then you can go for positioning the reinforcement. That is the vertical reinforcement and the sort of horizontal reinforcement. So, the vertical and the horizontal reinforcements are positioned properly to ensure the correct cover. So, the reinforcement a starter bars, it must be between a minimum of 1.2 meter and maximum of 1.8 meter height. So, here I have not given you the kicker, uh, this kicker is not shown in this diagram here. So, this is the first step and now let us move on to the second step. So, in the second step what we do is, um, you can see this form panels, uh, uh, so these are the form panels. So, these panels are clipped together and they are positioned according to the, the wall lines on the base slab. So, the second step you can see the form panels are clipped, uh, acro uh, uh, clipped along the, the wall lines on the base slab. So, that is the second step in the assembly of the slip form. Now, let us move on to the third step. So, what we do in the third step is you can see here. Uh, this is the top frames. So, these top frames are added and they are used to give the tapper to the both the sides of the form panels or the shutters and the panels you can see they are braced and it is fixing them in the position. So, in the third step of the slip form construction process, the top frames, the top frames are added on the both the sides of the shutter panels. So, that is all about the third step. Now, let us move on to the fourth step. So, in the fourth step, what we do is, so here you can see, this is called as the, the pre-assembled yoke assembly. That is, the pre-assembled yoke frames are positioned and they are fixed to the, the sides of the shutters at the veiling level. So, you can see, this yoke assembly are fixed to the shutters at the veiling levels. So, that is the fourth step. And let us move on to the fifth step. So, in the fifth step, what we do is once this pre assembled yoke assembly is fitted to the both, this, uh, is fixed, and then the next step is like it's uh, go for installing the working deck. So, this is called as the working deck. So, this working deck it is made up of 100 by 100 mm timbers, they are fixed into this uh, top frames and 225 by uh, 50 mm boards they span between the top frames. So, uh, the size is 100 by 100 mm, 225 by 50 mm, all these things we have to do the design and we have to find the sizes. So, in the next step that is in the step 5 of the slip form construction process, we go for installing the working decks which are fixed on the top frames. So, that is all about the step 5 of the slip form construction process. Now, let me move on to the sixth step. So, in the sixth step, like after like you fix this working deck, so what we can do is we can go for assembling the top deck we can see here. So, this top deck you can see it is made up of this sort of the primary and the secondary beams which is of 125 by 100 mm timber beams and it is supported on uh, like you know 225 by 50 mm boards. So, in the sixth step of the slip form construction process, after you fix this working platform, you can go for fixing the top platform or the top deck. So, the next is uh, the step 7. So, in the step 7, what we do is like we will be fixing the hydraulic jacking units. As you can see here, the hydraulic jacking units are fitted at every lifting point and the climbing tubes, you can see, they are lowered uh, uh, through them from the top deck. So, once the hydraulics have been tested, 
then the entire assembly is ready to slide up that is uh, the assembly is ready to do the, the slip forming process or the sliding process so that is the step seven of the construction process slip form process and in the step eight you can see uh, once uh, this uh, slide has reached the sufficient height then you can go for attaching this sort of the hanging scaffolding frames so this we call it as the mason scaffold so these are the, the different steps which are involved in the assembly of the slip form structures i hope all the steps are very clear to you so now let me move on to the next slide so in the next slide uh, let us discuss about the what are the advantages of the slip forms so the advantages of the slip form is uh, it helps to increase the the overall rate of construction and work productivity so this method like you know there is no need to use the cranes in this method in uh, that is in most of the cases you don't require crane for the slip form process so that is an advantage here and as i said in the first part of my lecture it is a continuous extrusion process so there is no need to set and strip the formwork in every lift as you do in the conventional concreting so that is the a second advantage the third advantage is you don't require the tie rods because the concrete pressure is taken by the the yoke assembly directly so as a result there is no need for making the holes to fill uh, and look you know to insert the tie rods which will uh, thereby like you no know, as you yes there is no need to fix this uh, tie rods this obviously reduce the labor cost and also the it overall it improves the appearance of the structure and also this makes as a watertight structure and uh, uh, talking about the speed the speed of around like 7 feet and 30 feet per 24 hours are possible with the slip form so many times the speed allows the reuse of the formwork on repetitive elements without impacting the overall schedule and thus it reduces the total uh, i mean the total formwork cost and moving on to the next advantages uh, what i can say is like construction can be it could be like you know it continuous and it is monolithic so that's why like it results in maximum durability and also the long service life for the structure and uh, one of the biggest advantages it provides a superior concrete finish without any horizontal joints and another advantage is like you don't release the form panels from the structure during the climbing as like uh, how it is commonly done in other systems of form work so here like you know the form panels are like slowly it is climbing in small increments and it is continuously connected to the structure at the multiple points therefore it makes it as a very safe system and uh, the other advantages i can say uh, it is a very compact and it can be pre-assembled ahead of the time so once your foundation is ready slip form can be quickly placed on the foundation and construction can be started almost immediately and uh, uh, the greatest uh, the biggest advantage is this technology is very much economical for the tall structure and it becomes very competitive starting at about 60 feet of height and continues to improve with increasing height thereafter so these are all about the advantages of the slip form structure so uh, in this part of the lecture we discussed about what is a slip form and uh, we discussed about uh, what is the construction procedure involved in the slip form construction and also we discussed about what are the functions of the various components of slip form and after that we all we also discussed about how to assemble the slip form with neat sketches and finally we discussed about the advantages of the slip form so that's all about this technique slip form construction.